Summer takes hold over Texas. Today is our second full day of summer. Some parts of the country are cold and some are hot. Let's take a look at the surface map for this evening. Currently, we've got this cold front, which is moving off the east coast. A little bit of rain and showers still hanging on in New England. The tail end of the front passing through Atlanta. And we've got this little backdoor front coming through central Mississippi and Little Rock, where we have an east wind and some cool conditions. And you notice a big difference in the dew point. 48 there at Little Rock, 56 at uh, whatever station that is. And that contrasts quite a bit with these 70s out there in east and central Texas. In the western U.S., it is very warm. Boise showing 97 at this hour. We've got 88 at Great Falls and 93 at Billings. And much of the high desert of Nevada coming well up into the upper 80s and low 90s. And I've got some bad news it's going to get a lot worse for that area this weekend, especially up in the Pacific Northwest. And if you think that 95 degree reading in the deserts of Washington are high, wait till you see what's coming. I'll have a chart for that in just a little bit. And about the only significant area besides that, well, we've got this high pressure, polar high coming in from Canada, bringing 70s and even 60s and 50s up there in the northeast U.S. And we've got this other little front up there in the Des Moines area, Omaha, bringing some showers and thunderstorms to that region. Well, this time of year, we've got to be really attentive to where the boundaries are. That's really important in summer because we don't have strong fronts all the time. A big player are these boundaries, and that comes from thunderstorm outflow. And we can see we've got a lot of thunderstorm outflow, and you can kind of trace out where this front is through the Midwest into the central U.S. Now, we're starting out yesterday about, uh, it's going to be about 11 a.m., very stormy in the central part of the country. And as we roll forward, you see these storms start going up with maximum heating, some of these storms quite severe, and some of you may have seen that tornado in Montreal. That's going to be those storms right there. Right around that time, and there was even a supercell a little bit after this frame up there near Presque Isle, Maine. Some very unusual weather for that region. And as we go further south, a little bit less shear and less severe weather activity, but numerous cells. And going forward through the afternoon, the activity progresses southeast, numerous cells in the southeast states, and quite a bit of activity in the northeast U.S. And you can see these cells going up in Texas. And going into the nighttime hours, those storms push south. It looks like we're left with quite a few convective outflow boundaries. However, this is on the heels of a strong front, so everything is being swept southeast. And for this afternoon, we see showers and weak storms pushing off the east coast into the Atlantic. And SPC just looking for a slight risk there in Iowa and the Omaha area with a severe watch for that region. And we can also see an unsettled pattern over Oregon. That's a little bit unusual. Some thunderstorms developing there. And that's going to be due to this cutoff low off the coast of California. Some instability associated with that spreading out over the deserts and combining with very hot temperatures in that area. Here we've got a new product. This is called the Extreme Forecast Index. It's a product from the ECMWF model, the European model. And this takes the ensemble members and looks at climatology and finds areas that have a high likelihood of having unusual temperatures, unusual precipitation, wind, and so on. And you can see in the northern plains and Rockies, it's going to be hot. This is going to be for Wednesday. So looking at tomorrow, some hot weather from Montana down through Colorado and New Mexico. Now, our attention shifts out towards the western U.S. This is going to be Thursday. A little bit of residual hot weather there in Kansas 
And going into Friday, this is where the heat starts right there, up there in British Columbia, Victoria, Vancouver, Seattle, looking for a high likelihood of warm conditions. And you can see some rain heading back into the Chicago area once again. And then we go into Saturday, the heat spreads into Washington, still looks wet out there in the Midwest. Sunday, the heat just keeps spreading and Monday, it's even worse. So how bad is it going to get? Let's take a look at the Weather Service graphical product. Now, I do prefer this product, this graphical forecast, because it represents the official Weather Service forecast. We're looking at high temperatures here for today. You can see that 97 there at Boise. For tomorrow, a little bit cooler, but Thursday and Friday, that's going to be the last of the good weather before the problems start setting in. There's Saturday coming up to 99 there at Spokane, and I think that's Yakima there with 106. And then going into Sunday, lots of hundreds, 102 at Boise, and check out Monday, 106 at Boise, 110 at Yakima. I did see that from the National Blend of Models guidance. One of the forecast offices indicated that there was a 30% chance Portland would tie or set its all-time record high over the weekend. That's kind of a low percentage. And in fact, you know, you can see the numbers here, 101 for Monday at Portland, 102 for Sunday, 102 Sunday or Saturday. So that's not near the 107, which would be the all-time record. However, it is going to be quite hot and there is that outside chance that they could break that record. And look at that, 96 for Seattle on Saturday, 97 for Sunday. Air conditioning is not really that common in that part of the country, so that's going to be pretty rough. The official forecast for Vancouver from Environment Canada has 28 degrees Celsius over the weekend, which is 82 Fahrenheit, and then they've got inland temperatures of 33 to 34, which is going to be about 91 to 93 Fahrenheit. Okay, let's see how this all plays out on the 500 millibar chart. Looking at the North American continent, we can see a pretty substantial northwesterly flow through the Canadian region down to the Great Lakes. Now, in the wintertime, that would be associated with some cold air outbreaks. And it's, they're certainly getting that in the Great Lakes and the northeast coast. However, we've got the other side of the equation, the ridge. That's going to be building in. First, we got to contend with this little bit of low pressure area aloft. That's going to be moving onshore. There's how things look when we do the video tomorrow. Low grazing the coast around San Francisco there. And that's a really deep low there south of the Aleutians. Quite a sp spider web of height contours. Still continuing that northwesterly flow through Canada into the Great Lakes area. And looks like the ridge is trying to build in there a little bit through the Rockies. In fact, there will be some hot temperatures in that part of the country. When we do the video on Thursday, this is how things will look. Some of that instability will be coming into California. And with that, some storms and low precipitation chances. That's a problem because that can get wildfires started out in places like the Sierra Nevadas. We really need a good drenching rain to get rid of that. And the vegetation is quite dry through much of the southwestern U.S. So this can actually mean trouble. But we do see the ridge building there along the British Columbia coast, 585 decameter line coming into Seattle, into Victoria. Meanwhile, Hudson Bay Low is still spinning. That's kind of strong for June. This is kind of an unusual pattern for this time of year. Usually things are settling down. Then going into Friday, well, <laughs> we pretty much squished that low into nothingness. There it is right there around Monterey. And a very strong high, 594 decameter height. That's probably close to a record around I think that's Vancouver Island right there, and quite a bit of ridging. So it's going to be a hot one in British Columbia and Washington all the way down to the Snake River Valley. For Saturday, that upper level high continues roasting the Pacific Northwest. Meanwhile, I'm looking over here, and it looks like there's some sort of trough that's going to probably be associated with increased precipitation chances in the Corn Belt into the Great Lakes. Meanwhile, that polar vortex still 
doing pretty good there up there in the Labrador Sea, up into the Arctic ice pack. Then for Sunday, still got that upper level high there in the Pacific Northwest and a very high amplitude flow, maybe kind of a split flow through the northern plains. The main polar front jet up there in Canada, and this is kind of a branch coming down into the central U.S. And then for Monday, it looks much the same. Hot out west and lots of troughing in the north central U.S., so continued above average chances of storms in the north central U.S. and parts of the Midwest. So if you want to get really lazy, well, here's the total accumulated precip from now until Monday. Looks like the Corn Belt, yeah, they're definitely going to get it all the way down into southeastern Kansas and Oklahoma. Not so much for central Texas or east Texas. Also, looks like the Appalachians will be in between a lot of the rain. And unfortunately, yep, looks like very little in the northwest U.S. However, you can see the effects of that trough moving into California and Nevada, some very spotty amounts of 0.1 to maybe 0.2 inches of precip, and that's not enough to mitigate the wildfire danger. And I'd figured I'd pass along this link from Ed Davies. He says, I believe you'll enjoy the latest from NASA's Earth Observatory. It was updated around the 22nd when he wrote. It features some great cloud formations. You might even like to show this in your presentations. Yep, there it is, the Earth Observatory, earthobservatory.nasa.gov. And it looks like this website is updated quite often. 23rd image of the day. They've got stuff from the 20, well, go down a little, little bit further. And you can see, yep, June 22nd, African dust visits a Europe. Quite a dust plume there coming into Italy from Tunisia and Algeria. That's it right there, contrasting with this stratocumulus and altocumulus off to the west. And they got some radiation images, sea surface temperatures, and a lot of other interesting material. And if that's not enough, you can go to NASA Worldview. That's going to be worldview.earthdata.nasa.gov. And there's always some interesting imagery to see here. You just pan around and, yep, we can find that dust right there in Italy. That was earlier today. And you can see that the images are made up with these swaths because this is a polar orbiter system. And when you get to the edge of the swaths, the images tend to be a little bit fuzzy. So if your area of interest is on the edges, like right here, and you wanted to look at that part of Africa, it's pretty simple. You just go up here and you select another satellite. Didn't work there, but you know you just keep looking. And a lot of times you'll find one that's right on the center and you'll get some clear images. And you can check in on North Korea, for example, see what's going on. Looks like some instability in that area. Moisture, cool conditions aloft, producing some numerous showers and thunderstorms in that region. Looks pretty clear in China. And then we get into the monsoon type pattern further to the south around Taiwan and southern China. And that will, of course, drift northward over the next few weeks. They call that the Changma in Korea. And... I should know that because I forecasted in Seoul for a year when I worked for U.S. Forces Korea. And yeah, you can get in there and look at some cool patterns. This is off the coast of South America. You can zoom right into the center of that circulation. Looks like a little bit of shallow cumulonimbus in there. It would be probably pretty spectacular if you were on a ship because the air in here tends to be very clear between the clouds. So probably a lot of intense blue sky with these showers, these lines of showers in between. 
Anyway, we could go on all evening looking at the stuff, and maybe sometime we'll do that. But I think that'll have to do it for now. Anyway, I want to thank you all for watching Forecast Lab. I appreciate your support. Remember, we have a Patreon, so I don't put ads on Forecast Lab. You've probably noticed that. If there are ads, then YouTube is sneaking them in there. But I have the ads turned off, and I count on you for your support. So keep in mind, if you want to support us, go to Patreon or go to weathergraphics.com, and you can help us out that way by picking up a book or some software. Anyway, I hope you all have a great Tuesday evening. Take care, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.